I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on complex numbers. Complex numbers can be represented in two dimensions using Argan diagrams. In this video, we will see different forms of complex numbers and the transformations they go through when operations are performed on them. Specifically, we'll look into Argan diagram. We'll see transformations when multiplied by i, transformations when multiplied by powers of i, the pure imaginary number, how to represent conjugates and reciprocals on a plane, right? So, uh, just to give you uh, an idea of what we're talking about, we could represent complex numbers on Cartesian plane, but there we normally say that horizontal x-axis will take care of the real numbers, so this becomes the real part of it and this is the imaginary part. To correlate it with our uh, uh, x, y coordinate system, we may write i times y here and x there, right? So that is how we kind of represent them. So if I have a complex number, let us say uh, z, which is equal to, uh, let's say 2 plus 3i, right? So we're taking a very simple example. In that case, it really means 2 is the real part. So, so the number 2 will be represented along the horizontal x-axis, let us say like this, right? And then 3i will go vertically up, right? 3 units. And the resultant will be represented by z. Correct? So that becomes the complex number z. Is that clear to you? So that is how we represent them on uh, a Cartesian plane, we say, modified, and we call it an Argan diagram. Is that clear? So the vertical axis represents the imaginary part. The horizontal represents the real part. Now let's look into the questions related with this concept. So once again, let's try to understand um, this paragraph here, which says, let z equals to a plus bi be a complex number represented in two-dimensional space by an argot diagram, where real numbers are along the horizontal x-axis and the imaginary numbers are along the vertical y-axis. This is also known as Cartesian form of a complex number. Clear? So, at times we may just call it by the name Argan diagram or we may also say Cartesian form. Right? Now, based on this, I have four questions for you. So, let us see how to answer these multiple choice questions based on this particular concept. Question 1a. If z is multiplied by pure imaginary number i, then its effect on the Argan diagram is what? Is it 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, 90 degrees clockwise rotation, reflection on the x-axis or reflection on the y-axis? So that is your first question to answer. You can actually pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. Let me first discuss all the four questions with you. Question number two, which is 1b, is if z is multiplied by pure imaginary number i to the power of 15. So in a, we multiplied by just i now by some power. In this case, we have taken power as 15. Then its effect on the Argan diagram is what? Is it a rotation by 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, or by 180 degrees, or there is no change, right? Part c of the same question is, what is true about the complex number and its conjugate. So conjugate is 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation of the complex number or it is clockwise rotation or it is a reflection on x-axis or a reflection on y-axis. Okay. The last part here is reciprocal of a complex number z is along 90 degrees clock counterclockwise rotation of z 90 degrees clockwise rotation of z, reflection on z, of z on x-axis or reflection of z on the y-axis. So these four questions are very much related and let's try to understand 
how to answer these questions, right? So I hope you find it interesting and useful. So let's begin with the concept and from the very first question. Now, so the first question for us is, if Z is multiplied by pure imaginary number I, then its effect on the organ diagram is what? So let's take a complex number and see how it changes, right? So what I will do here is I'll take a very simple number so that we can easily plot and see the effect, right? Okay, so let us say that we have z as equals to 2 plus 3i. Now, if I multiply by i, then what happens? Then I get 2i plus 3 times i square, right? Multiplying by i. Now, we know i square is negative. So, what we get here is 2i negative 3. Perfect. So, 2i negative 3 means what? It means, you can write this as negative 3 plus 2i. Do you see that part? So, initially, we had the complex number, which was kind of like this. 2 here, right? 1, 2, 3. So, so it was kind of like this. Now, after we have done the multiplication, right, then zi is what? So, what you notice here is that now the real part this was earlier 2 and this was 3, right? Now what you notice here is that the real part is negative 3, right? So it is now on this side, 1, 2 and 3 and 2 up, correct? So it is kind of like this. Do you see that? So as you can observe, there is a rotation which is counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So that is the Z and this is ZI. So the correct answer for this is that's a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it is 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Is that clear to you, right? So that is how we could actually visualize it and then answer. Now I'm, I'm very sure that this really can sustain and you can remember what we are trying to do here. Perfect. Now let's take the next question. Now question number 1b is very much related to what we just did. It says if z is multiplied by pure imaginary number i to the power of 15, then its effect is what? Right. So i to the power of 15. You can actually pause the video now and answer the question. So we know it is a rotation by 90 degrees counterclockwise. So again, just to take an example, let's take a similar kind of a situation. Uh, we'll call this as our vector, uh, the complex number z, which we'll say it's 2 plus 3i. Correct? Now you're going to multiply by i to the power of 15. Now what is the meaning of i to the power of 15? Now, whenever it comes to the powers of i, what is important to understand is that, let's write it down here, right? So, i square is minus 1, you know, right? i cube will be minus i and i to the power of 4 will be plus 1, correct? So, so this is what you remember and we have seen what is the effect of i in the previous example. So when it is i to the power of 15, it means 1 less than 16, right? 1 less than 16. So it is kind of a i cube situation. It does make sense to you, right? So we could write this as i to the power of 15 as i to the power of 12 times i cube, right? So i to the power of 12 is basically 1 because it's a multiple of 4, right? So i to the power of 4 q, you can think like this, okay? So basically this is 1 times i q. So that means effectively we are going through 90 degrees. How many times? 3 times. Every time you multiply by i, you actually rotate. Think like this. So if I do times i it is one 
90 degrees. If I do times i square, then it is 2. And if I do times i cube, then it is in this particular position. So if you compare, what has happened is that effectively the position has shifted along this side, which you can say it is 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Does it make sense to you? Right? So that will be the position of uh, z times i to the power of 15. Is that clear? Or you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So every time you multiply by i, it is a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. So you can see the multiples. Every four times it comes back here and that helps you to count. And that is how you can get powers of i. Perfect. So that's how we could answer this. It is related to similar question when I say what is i to the power of 99 equals to? Well, that is equal to minus i, correct? Since we know i to the power of 100 will be equal to 1. So it is 1 less than that. So it is like mod 4. Okay, if some of you understand that. That is remainder after division by 4. Is that okay? So that is what it is. I hope this concept is absolutely clear. Now let's take the next example. 1c. What is true about complex number z and its conjugate z bar? Written like that z bar, right? So but the conjugate you understand. If I have z as equals to a plus bi, then the conjugate will be a minus bi. Is that okay? So Let's get back to our example. It's a good example, 2, 3, right? So it really helps. So, and, you know, A and B are real numbers, becomes difficult to explain. So if I again have 2 plus 3i, and conjugate will be what? Conjugate will be 2 minus 3i. So what happens? Clearly, it gets reflected, right? So it gets reflected here. And what you get is this. So it is a reflection on the x-axis. Does make sense? So z bar is a reflection on the x-axis. So that is option C for you. So whenever we are working with the conjugates, think as if it is a reflection on the x-axis. Right? Does make sense to you. These are very important concepts, may look very simple now, but with the help of these basic units of information, you can actually solve very difficult questions. The last question here is, now we'll talk about reciprocal of a complex number z. So, so the question here is, reciprocal of a complex number z is along what, right? So along. 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation of z, 90 degrees clockwise rotation of z, reflection of z on the x-axis or reflection of z on the y-axis. So that's the question. Take it as a test question for yourself. Think about it. You may take an example just as we had been working with and then tell me how to answer this multiple choice question. Okay. Here is what I will think about. So let us say again, we'll take z as uh, 2 plus 3i. Well, you could write, uh, you could write uh, a plus bi and work with it. No problems, right? So when we say reciprocal, so reciprocal means what? Reciprocal means 1 over z, right? So that becomes your reciprocal. That means 1 over 2 plus 3i, right? So when you have this, you need to multiply by its conjugate, so you get 2 minus 3i divided by 2 minus 3i, correct? So in the numerator, you get 2 minus 3i. In the denominator, we get square of this, right? So, so the square of this, when you multiply them, you get <coughs> 2 square, right? Plus, uh, you can say, let's multiply with this. So we get, uh, I wanted to do a shortcut, but anyway, uh, so we'll multiply with this 2 first, 2 
times 2 is 2 square, 2 times this is 6i, okay. Now we'll multiply with this, minus 6i, and then here we get plus, I should write, okay. Let me write minus 3 square, which is 9i square. Let me write like this, okay. So we'll add a step here. So what we really get here is 2 minus 3i over, these two cancel, right? And and this particular thing, i square is negative 1, so we get 4 plus 9. So basically, 1 over z is equal to 2 minus 3i divided by 30. Correct. So what you notice here is that the numerator is 2 minus 3i, and then this is a number, scale factor, right, which happens to be the magnitude square of this, right? It's a magnitude square of this z, okay? Uh, so, okay, now anyway, uh, <clears throat> what are we doing? Yeah, so that's clear, perfect. So basically what we have here is a conjugate of uh, the uh, complex number divided by 13. It does make sense to us, right? So 13 can be taken as a scale factor. So 13 is a constant, 13 is a constant. You can say scale factor in this case. So the main part is this, which is a complex conjugate, right? So if I have this vector here, let us say, what we learn is the conjugate will be along this direction, reflected, right? So it is reflected, so it is reflected kind of like this, right? Now the only thing is, it is smaller or larger, whatever it is, it has a scale factor, but it is along this direction. So it may be, may be this much. Do you see that? So that is our 1 over z. If we are talking about the complex number z as shown here. But it is along the reflection on the x-axis, right? So it is along the reflection of the x-axis. Is that clear to you, right? So which one is the correct option for us? Is reflection of z on the x-axis. Now the key word here which I have used is, is along. So it is not exactly the same thing, but it is in the same line. Perfect. Now complex numbers are also treated as vectors. So vectors have direction. So it makes sense if we talk about a scalar multiple in this case. So in, in our applications, we might see the similar application in vectors, perfect, where this could be a scalar multiple. Okay, so we'll not get there, but it gives you an idea that it is along that direction where the complex number z is reflected on the x-axis. Does it make sense to you? So I hope that's an important concept and all these, uh, these four questions are very interesting and useful. I would like you to go through them once again, try to understand the concepts, and then we'll take up something more about complex numbers, which is going to help you to understand this topic in and out. Thank you, and all the best.